I'm John Chancellor, and this is a program about the American promise, about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We heard a lot about liberty this summer during the 4th of July celebrations. And during the patriotic speeches and the fireworks, some of us began to wonder what the American promise really means today in a time of rapid change. So we're going to ask. We're going to find out from four Americans, each of whom stands at a point of change, each with particular hopes and problems, each trying to make some sense out of the promise of life in this country. Chris Rice. Yes, Ricardo. Do you want to set something up right now? If you would have told me 15 years ago that at age 41, I would not have a husband or family, I wouldn't have believed it. Chris Royce is smart and successful, but also still single, and that's a worry. In my 20s, I didn't put family first in my mind because I thought I had so many years ahead of me. And then the years passed, and then my 30s, and my 40s, and I have no one. I have no children. I worry about being alone, and that's why I really am trying to set the framework now towards having real good friendships. Does he just say that, or does he really mean it? Something will happen. I'll be, maybe it's a holiday, and I'll be at a relative's, and I'll look at my cousins, and I'll watch them watching their children, and I'll see the sparkle in their eye, and I feel left out. No, I was going to have me a husband, two kids, and my husband was going to have a business job. He was going to have a briefcase. Hey, he came, but he didn't have the briefcase, and he didn't have the business job, OK? I got the two kids, and he's gone. I never thought I would be on public assistance. 14 years of public assistance for Vernita Brown. What's going to happen to her kids? Frankly, I just want them to grow up and get decent jobs and live decent lives. Most of the jobs I've had was office cleaning, you know, cleaning other people's dirt. I'm not cleaning anybody else's dirt. They're going to start cleaning mine. Learning a trade is her way out, but to get the learning, she's had to go back to welfare. Now I'm into something that I want to be into. I can't afford to take a crummy job because the school is too important for me. As long as you giving, people are going to sit there they're not going to get out and really try to do anything. I realize this myself. You know, I'm sitting here getting welfare, you know, and they're intimidating me and everything, but I'm still sitting. And then I said, oh, no, it, it can't be like that. You know, it can't be like that. I have to get out here and get it for me. I got the desire to be something, you know? I don't want to be uh, just a regular worker, because since I came to the United States, I came with a purpose or something. Jose Gonzalez got here illegally from Mexico. Now, with a wife and four children born in this country, he has become determined to be a legal American. I think I got most of the promise already, because I got all my kids born in the United States. I got a good job, and the dream you have right now, what I have right now, is to get enough money until I reach the age 50. Yes, please. We're not taking anybody else's job. We have uh, scrub floors, we have housekeepers, window cleaners, uh, janitorials, bathroom cleaners. That's all Mexicans do. Americans wouldn't do that kind of a job, even if they get $10 an hour. And we do it for uh, only minimum wages. I'm not employed. I uh, was laid off in 1984, February 4th. I've been out of work since then. Everything I worked for, I'm going to try to keep, especially this house, because this is where all our sweat and our blood went through. Eugene Franco, former factory worker, wife, three kids, no job, mad as hell. We're starving here. We're losing our homes. We, everything that we've worked for all of our lives. There you go. I'm going to, back to school. I am going into electronics, and I'm looking for opportunity. When I no longer have enough money to pay for my bills, my family's still going to eat. If I have to take a shotgun to go to the store to get the food for them, one way or another. 
During this program, we're going to talk with the people you've just seen and with some others here in the studio, each of whom has a distinctive view of the American promise. A senator, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, who has thought long and hard about the problems of this country. A novelist, Toni Morrison, who has shown that the experiences of black women have meaning for us all. An activist, Beatrice Cortez, who believes that the poor can help themselves if you help them to do it. And an educator, Ernest Boyer, one of the great teachers in our country. Well, stand by, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back to you. Also in this hour, we'll hear from Spalding Gray, a storyteller, a spinner of yarns, who has his own special, highly praised way of talking about America. And the heart of our project involves these Americans, whom you've already seen. We'll hear what they have to say. They're connected to us by satellite, and we're connected to you, because this is a program about all of us. We'll begin after this.